Support Agency, or DASA, placed a requirement upon the U.S. Army Electronics Command for the development of a family of ballistic sounding rockets of widely varying capability. The magnitude and scope of this task dictated establishment of a separate project. This film is a report on that project, designated 9.5. At White Sands Missile Range, the Special Projects Division of the Electronic Warfare Laboratory was assigned Project 9.5. Personnel of this organization, an element of the Electronics Command of the Army Materiel Command, are richly experienced in research programs employing high-altitude rockets. An early effort of 9.5 personnel at White Sands was to determine the nature of the various DASA requirements. What payload weights and configurations were desired? what flight performance was required of carrier rockets, what trajectories, altitudes, and positions in space were needed. When the answers were in, it was obvious that a number of different vehicle configurations were required. Above all, these vehicles were to be reliable, versatile, and economical. They were to be designed with a building block concept to maximize interchangeability of motors and hardware. The payload section is located in the nose of the rocket. These payloads, weighing as much as several hundred pounds, were to reach altitudes from 50 to 600 kilometers. On display is a typical nose cone designed to carry various instrumentation packages. Once rocket performance requirements were known, many existing rocket systems were evaluated. Numerous factors had to be considered. To name only a few, mechanical and aerodynamic design, flight dynamics, safety, reliability, and logistics. From such analyses, commercially available upper air sounding rockets were selected. For boosters, such reliable military rockets as the Nike Ajax and Honest John were chosen. Thus, costly development programs were avoided. However, many parts had to be designed and fabricated. For example, the interstage adapters to join the various rocket stages. The fabrication job was assigned to the Lexington Bluegrass Army Depot, as was the manufacture of launcher rails. The Arizona Gear Company also performed some fabrication work. Space Data Corporation designed the adapters and associated hardware. Under contract, the firm analyzed all flight data from Project 9.5 certification firing program. Space Data Corporation also analyzed meteorological data from each rocket flight in order to develop a ballistic program to utilize MET data in determining rocket launcher settings. During firings, such data will be collected by wind vanes on a 200-foot tower. Radar-tracked pilot balloons, radio sonde systems, and meteorological rockets. At Eglin Air Force Base, to accommodate all configurations of the rocket family, two of the three new launchers were tested. This is the large launcher capable of firing rockets weighing as much as 20,000 pounds. The intermediate launcher will accommodate multi-stage rockets of up to 7,500 pounds gross weight. And this is the small launcher tested at White Sand. Each boom can support up to 4,000 pounds. The twin boom requires less ground area and provides the economy of a common pedestal and azimuth remote control. Requirements were established for rocket assembly, storage facilities, launch pads, and cable design and installation. Another project responsibility was design and development of electronic firing systems for launching the rockets. 
This was done by the Air Force Missile Development Center at Holloman Air Force Base. Now let's back up a little in time and take a look at the flight test program. These are the configurations finally decided upon. Six basic rocket motors were used. Although the individual stages had been proved separately, the new combination still required test firings for proof of reliability. Consequently, some 140 rockets have been scheduled for firing as certification rounds. That is, to certify the soundness of the carrier system itself. For payloads which were ready, some rounds also served to certify the instrumentation package. Highly trained Holloman Air Force Base personnel prepared the 14-foot single-stage javelin for firing. This crew conducted all 9.5 firings at both White Sands and Eglin. The javelin can reach an altitude of 45 kilometers, carrying a 120-pound payload. The HIDAC here at Eglin Air Force Base is also single-stage The Honest John Nike, another two-stage configuration, puts a 570-pound payload up to approximately 80 kilometers. The first of the three-stage rockets is an Honest John Nike Javelin. This combination can reach 340 kilometers with a 170-pound payload. Honest John Nike Hydac, a similar configuration, reaches an altitude of over 460 kilometers, carrying 170 pounds.
A special purpose vehicle for an extra heavy payload is the Blue Goose, consisting of an XM-33 solid fuel rocket with four solid fuel strap-on motors known as recruit rockets. All motors fire at liftoff. The recruit rockets functioning as boosters and eight specially adapted Honest John spin rockets providing additional stability. In conclusion, beginning in March 1964, over 120 certification rounds have been fired with a high degree of success improving the 9.5 rocket vehicles. Many of these flights have also served for payload certification. The three launchers have been perfected and placed in storage against the day they may be needed. Automatic systems have been readied for gathering and processing meteorological data for rapid setting of the launchers. The electronic firing systems for launching the rockets have been developed. And the final phases, procurement of equipment and storage of essential 9.5 items, are nearly finished. It might appear that this project will soon be completed. But in actuality, such is not the case, since Project 9.5 must be kept abreast of ever-advancing rocket technology.